Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the Out of Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 102. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building. Introduce yourself to the audience. Uh, you already know what it is. It's Sister Tilia Taylor, president of City of Dreams Coalition. I'm also chair of the social music movement, uh, C- CEO and founder of From One Mother to Another, and a whole host of other programs really hitting the streets and the trenches. Copy that. We both started off wrong. So I like them. Wow, I like my sound or something today, Captain. All right. Now let's hit the rundown, y'all. Get comfortable. E Block Radio okay. Network every Monday at two o'clock on the E Block Radio Network. GFT Radio Network, two o'clock every Tuesday. Wednesday is 216 to blend. That is 12 midnight, 8 a.m., 8 p.m. Friday, I say podcast radio network at 10 a.m. Saturday is the THC Media. As of the recording, I want to uh, send a special shout out to everybody who came out to the How to Hustle Live show. How to Hustle Live show three was a success. We appreciate you for coming through. We appreciate everybody who did show love. Even if you just sent in some bread, purchased a ticket out of town and you couldn't make it, we want to salute you and say thank you. There will be a fourth How to Hustle Live show, and we will get to you later on this year with the details for that situation. Uh, My cleaning company is at H2H Cleaning. It's custom uh, H2H Cleaning. That is roof and plumbing, HVAC, uh, cleanups, cleanouts, floor and carpeting. You name it, we can make it happen over at H2H Cleaning. And Custom Hustle World is my clothing line. Custom Hustle World on Instagram, Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. We got jackets, jerseys, sneaks, football, basketball, baseball, hockey jerseys, and the sweatsuits. You name it, we customizing it. And they're one of one unless you buy four. And the sneakers are available in any color. Just because the red and blacks are the prototypes does not mean that you cannot get whatever color it is that you need and whatever color it is that you want. That is at Custom Hustle World on Instagram, at Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. Now, Sister Talia, episode 102. This one is about community. Uh, Sister Talia had a event that she tapped me in with on a two days notice. And I told her, I don't have anything prepared, but I will definitely be there. We will definitely make this situation happen. And thank you for inviting me. We then have since had several conversations where she's put me on a little game of what she got going on. And we're going to sit here and talk about the importance of community. Now that you've been listening to the How to Hustle podcast, uh, you've seen that we had shots out the yacht, Kenyatta Bay, who was running the league at Choose for the past 20 years. We've yeah. had one of the rappers from the Young Flames on, Nephew, had him on, had Mary on to talk about the perspective of the kids and how the community is going. We had Cree on to talk about how the community is going. We had Quill from Let Us Help Us Basketball Camp, the free basketball camp for girls and boys. It runs all summer. And he'll be get back up this summer as well. Uh, Neef, my man Neef, who's trying to do a – he's trying to open up for kids who've lost their parents. He's trying to get mm. a center uh, opened up. Well, not even a center to start off with. He just want to start off with a couple of kids to try to have those conversations just because his son lost – he lost his baby mom, which means his son lost his mom at a young age, and he wants to create that safe space for kids. So community wow. very important to me. So when I tapped in with you, we connected, and now you talk about the community situations. Talk to us about why community is important to you, sister. Oh, on so many levels, so many levels. It's not just the community is important. Rebuilding our foundations is what's important. That's what's going to make our community. Right now, our, our community is plagued uh, with so much trauma, hurt, pain. Everybody just is hopeless. You know, we until we can't have a solid community, a solid uh, 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 neighborhood um, anymore until we rebuild our and starting with our families inside our house first. The community, uh, that's the only way we're going to strive like, and, uh, for us to be able to thrive in the black and brown communities. You know, every other culture everywhere around the world is thriving, but we need to re-understand and take pride in our culture, take pride in our people. And, and unite. We have so many different things from, from uh, religions, uh, uh, beliefs, just so many different things that divide us instead of us still uh, coming together all as one. All right. The thing that you said that I did, uh, nothing is built on it unless the foundation is strong. You can't mm-hmm. put a bench together if you don't get the bottom done first. So yeah. uh, definitely you got to start there. You got to start on the ground. 
The problem I think that became in these situations with our communities is everybody just focused on home. You stopped focusing on when I came up. I've said this several times. If you listen to the podcast, when I came up, you came out the door, the lady across the street, the lady next door and the lady down the street are all looking at you walk across the street and make sure that car is not coming to hit you. Nowadays, hey, my kids got across the street and that's fine. And damn everybody else. When you got to be paying attention to the little girl and the little boy because they're watching you. Whether it's good, bad, or indifferent that you're showing them, they're watching everything that you do. I don't know why people always think like you can remember shit from when you were six and seven and eight, but you think that these kids who are 12 and 14 can't remember shit from when they were six, seven, and eight. And when you was doing and saying all kinds of shit around them, it don't make sense. Exactly. I don't know why people do it. Exactly. And, and uh, that's the whole thing. Like, um, even like earlier, you know, I'm old, like, older than you, and it's like people. You know, the, even the, the my I call my family, um, uh, you know, a big sister, and I come from a place that my love and big sis, and they're just now getting it. Why I'm telling them to pull their pants up, and you know, I look at them twice, like you talking to. You know, I come from a place of, you know, even I've been in the streets. I was 12, 13 years old. I was left in these streets as a trade student. I, I always knew the 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 family, the foundation, the respect, the honor, the you know, um, and also the leadership. You know uh, that 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 we need from one from one another, but again, even people not, not aren't really focusing on their on that's one thing I can't agree with, with. People aren't focused on their family. They don't focus on their families until tragedy hit, hits home. Oh, a lot yeah, that's of, a definitely lot of these, a thing too. Yeah, a lot of these families, a lot of these these kids don't want to be out here for the majority. There's a lot of followers out there, but there's kids out here that if given the, the opportunity, they will thrive. Given the opportunity, they will succeed. They have to be given that opportunity. You know, it's way worse than it was when I was young, but now all the moms, all the dads, most of the kids are out here in the streets fending for themselves, you know, um, you know, fending for themselves. They don't have a stable home to like, okay, they go home, get a snack and eat, uh, eat they, they, without a uh, thousand one uh, 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 men, different men in the home. Uh, all different types of different things that are, are really going on. Um, so, like, the families, we're not focused on our families. You know, uh, we're not focused on our, on our families the way we should be. Um, that's why it was so important for me, um, you know, as I had to learn how to be a mother. You know, even though I always had it in me, and my kids always, I, I never wanted for nothing. You know, even though I wrote the check for my housekeepers and, you know, hustled and did, I still always went to school, all that stuff, it doesn't matter. It's the nurturing. It's the, how's your day going? How was school? Yeah, the attention don't. to detail, yeah. Yeah, because and like, they, and like, that's the thing that we always do as parents. As soon as we have kids, we focus straight on, damn, I got to get the money, I got to get the money. And all they want you to be is there. They don't remember the time that you, the money that you spent on whatever. They remember those times that you was there and took them wherever and did whatever with them. Whether they be your kids or, they, like I said, the kids next door. Because mm -hmm. that was a thing that my mom and my dad did, like, if such and such ain't eating, then bring them in. We can feed them. We got enough food to feed them. Why are you going to let them be hungry? You're going to run around with them all day. That's your man. You're supposed to take care of your man. Exactly. 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 But that was where we came up from. Now it's like, even with these kids, it's like the kids are running running the kids in these streets. That's why, you know, um, when we being originally when we came up with the um, – with the, you know, we know what we have to do, what we have to do until we get the opportunities, until we get the resources, but still control your blocks. And a lot of these moms be like, I'm going to get my son to do this, I'm going to get my son to do that, putting him in harm's way. Or knowing your son is out there on them corners, out because you done sold all the food stamps, so you can go out with your girls and, and all that other nonsense. I, I see it time and time and time again. But the whole thing is, what's the underlying problems? They're, they're like the depression, what these mothers go through, looking for love in the wrong places, you know, and then, you know, uh, lowering their standards, you know, lowering their standards, but then also the men not being the men that they should be in the, the leadership, sorry, in the leadership that they should be. You I, I, I put my phone down the third. Um, and the leadership, oh, that's why I could use my director. That. But the leadership that, that, um, that we're supposed to have. The men aren't men anymore. The men and, and the men, especially like I've lived all over the place. It's like it's a different breed here, here, here um, at home in Philly. The different oh. breeds, like, like I've a whole lot. 
No, I'm sorry. Look, the, the I'm not mad. mad. I ain't mad at you. Go ahead. No, the, I ain't mad the, at you. The gossip is like all day. Y'all, it's the men on, on gossiping on live, and and like it's just sickness. It's really sickening. And you know, for me as an elder, and I gotta keep trying to tell people, I am an I'm older. I bop. You understand me? I am I am a survivor. I am a survivor from just having my fourth show on December 31st. Wheelchair before, right before them because domestic violence. While I'm pregnant with my daughter. And I'm still, and I, I, and, and, um, I just let people know uh, around this time last year, um, you know, and told the truth because everybody was looking at me strong, strong, strong on clubs. I did this, I did that. But as if I was in a wheelchair, my, a, a wheelchair, I wound up, I started drinking, something I've never done. But I used it to tell people and let other mothers know that I understand the depression. You know, you know, my kids are always in private school, you know, uh, all the whole nine yards. It doesn't matter. I'm, I was still broken. Do you understand me? I was still yeah, broken. So you it's like trying to be everything for everybody else, but you never fix yourself is one of those things. I always throw at people is mm -hmm. the loudest voice you're going to ever hear is the one in your head. The world can yep. tell you whatever, but if you don't believe it, then it don't matter. Yeah, but that, but also for different people, like for different people, and I understand it even for men and women. And you know, there's a lot of men out here that's angry. These young boys out here angry uh, for so many different reasons. You know, how many times you want to see your mom out there tricking, coming in all? Yeah, you know I mean, with with uh, bags, your 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 um, what do they call it? Um, uh, the the stripper bag. You know what I mean, and all different types of stuff. Um, I'm, just being, I'm, I'm just being truthful. Nah, this is one thing that you said now. It's the difference between a male and a man. Uh, a male is just somebody who was born with a penis. But <laughs> a man is a person who handles his responsibilities, who steps up to those responsibilities and handles them accordingly. A male, like I said, is just somebody that was born with a penis. Um, now, I want you to talk to us about all of those different things that you do in the community. There are all those positive things that you got out there that you're trying to make happen for the city. Uh, what am I? Where do I start? Ah, mm, where do I really start? Well, one, we have to like really focus on, you know, how all these different programs, how I'm able to, you know, reach different generations. Um, you know, everybody keep saying, uh, I'm Sisteria, I'm a saint. And you don't look at me like that. Not at all. I'm a survivor. I even me being in the streets, I didn't grow up, you know, no no offense to, you know, people out there getting their money. But I didn't grow up to be a stripper. I knew I always wanted more. You know, I was left out there in the streets. Do you understand me? I hate, I hate leaving here when kids home or whatever, I always grew up in bandos. No, you didn't. You don't know what it is to grow up in a bando. But still going to school, going to temple, like, do you understand me? So with all these programs, they come from my, ki my kids, from di uh, different visions. I'm a visionary. I'm just starting to learn how people uh, have their books, their raps, their poetry. I have mine of different dreams. How I want to reach people. How I was a young girl out 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 here in the streets and didn't have have didn't have the ability. Was, and despite the fact that I was a straight A student taking tumble class in the sixth grade, I still went through stuff. So that's where my from one one mother to another program came in because if it wasn't for the people that did. Uh, 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 um, had placed their hands, their hands and their hearts on me, saved me from the streets. I could have been tricked out. I could have been whatever. What does uh, the what one mother? What does the one mother to another program? What is that focused on? From one mother to another. Uh, what is fo what is focused on? Um, just like myself. Um, I was I was very abused, abused child, um, abused child, and uh, but I was born. You know, the rest of my brothers, says twenty some of us, they were all born here. I was at a marriage. I was born in Jersey. But my dad, I'm the only one that my dad raised, and uh, he came and got me. I was a very, like I said, very abused. When I got to Philadelphia, I wasn't a CDF student. And this is, I'm talking about fourth, fifth grade. I was a W and withdrawal student. I used to stutter really bad. I didn't even talk. Like, really mm -hmm. bad abuse. And when my dad came and got me, I came and brought me straight to, that's when I learned I was actually smart. When he brought me to the legendary Mr. Brown School, uh, uh, from back in the day, Lancaster Avenue, where everybody knows what that is. And from that one black teacher, Miss Johnson, taught me I became a straight A student. From then on, to all different types of stuff. I knew somebody believed in me. Somebody believed in me. But also from a mother's standpoint, how I still me being in the streets, I didn't learn how to be a woman until, you know, nobody taught me how to shave and 
I was like, when I was, I was really out there when I was really young, but only, like I said again, I have to praise the Lord. I could have been so many other worse things, you know, so many other worse things, but people that still had substance and character and morals that took a hold of me. So with the, it still continues into uh, based off the rest of my life where I had to learn how to be a woman. I had to learn, I had, thank goodness, I had some of my people teach me how to, uh, so I had to make uh, real gravy and, and, and things of that sort. Um, and then had a hygiene, and I'm, I'm fortunate enough to at least have a, a quick example of that. Then, then uh, other stages of it is, you know, uh, also mental health. Like I, I come from uh, one, I'm, I'm a mixed race, uh, I'm uh, Spanish, Jamaican, and uh, eight different Indians. And I come from a very uh, from a mixed race, but I also had to learn, you know, with the depression. Everybody deals with something, but I was always in denial. Like, I'm always tough, come always battling something, but I never dealt with my triggers. So another part of the, from one mother to another is uh, all these women, you know, uh, have been through something. I have been through something where it's, it's depression, it's, you know, uh, domestic violence, but it's some, you know, God coming out your life, you know, but you want love so bad because you don't have the support system. It's cycle to this. So that's another cycle to from one mother to another. Even me as a mother, I was out there hustling. You know what I mean, running around. I, I mean, but still respected. That's why I can still walk in different rooms and not nobody. My kids are allowed, and I'm very, you know, I don't want to say proud, but joyful that law at least is still that into me. So uh, with that being said, it's different levels to, to that one program based on everything I went through. And everything if somebody I, wanted to sign, if somebody wanted to sign up, if somebody wanted to join the one mother to another, how would they be able to do that? I think I have uh, inbox us and reach us. I have a, I have a, uh, a few, it's a few of us, but what it is, is that's why a lot of people don't like me. I keep it real. I keep it, I keep it completely real. I have more than a few cases, um, more than a few cases that are successful, but they're not ready to get themselves together. Just like me, if it wasn't for my team and my, like everything, you know, everything I'm going through, I might have slipped back. You know what I'm saying? But we all need that support. So if when they, they um they all they do is call the inbox, um you know it doesn't have to be me. Uh, even though I have a lot of people that attach to me once they find you know who this really really is, um and I know better than the rest. But I, at least I survive. And I tell people that I use my story for other women. But like even though it was this, and I still fought through. This is still happening to me right now. My house keeps getting broken into. All these different things people try to stop me. Normally, I would have went back uh, depression. But actually, it's been doing the odds, making me stronger because of the people that I have around me. I had to start, you know, uh, even though I was never into, you know, certain things that were, oh, Google Kitty uh, down the street and all that ratchet. I mean, people know not to, you know, people surround themselves in neighborhoods and what's going on in their neighborhoods and what's going on with other people instead of what's going on with them, themselves. That's one thing, unfortunate. I, I, I guess me being a tomboy growing up, I never cared for none of it. There's a lot of women that, you know, they're worried about, you know, this man who will get this man instead of all the hustle they got inside themselves, all the hustle. But they had the opportunity to, to really have the substance and the support system and the support system to uh, conquer something. They've taken all that hustle into the boardroom or something else. But this is one thing about hustle. If you, if you hustle without structure, you just do a lot. Like, you're not yeah, accomplishing it. You ain't accomplishing nothing. You just doing too much at all times. Like you busy doing nothing all the time. Uh, oh, I, now. Well, absolutely. You're right about that. You're so right about that. Um, because I'm a man of many hustles as you as you hear. Uh City of Dreams Coalition. Talk to us a little bit about City of Dreams Coalition. What are you trying to do with that? Uh, what am I trying to do? Uh City Oh, what are, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Yeah. What are I, you uh, doing? Like, what yes. are you doing um, with that? What, we, what, what have we Let's lose try out of this. Yes, copy that. Let me. Yeah, I'll correct myself on that one. Yeah, there you go. Yes. All right. Yeah. So, um, uh, it's it's like I said, city of dreams. Like I was, I was going into different programs. There's so many different ways that we that we really touch. I got you. That really touch the um really touch the uh the different generation. Again, like city of dreams is like I don't I can't sing um because my me being paralyzed and all that stuff I can't dance, but you know, it's City of Dreams is a platform where we all we're all I don't see this. It's all over from we're interfaith, first of all. We're interfaith. I, I catch a lot of hell supporting uh, supporting other faiths. Um, even though I don't celebrate anything 
talk about how uh, I eat up, I don't eat up. And that's all I saw, not even my birthday. I haven't had a birthday party in my whole grown life. Yeah, but um, uh, City Dreams were so many different um, entities. Um, being the homeless, uh, uh, were City of Spitters, City of Spitters um, label for artists that I, I invest uh, and, uh, that I invest from them because so I'm just serious about their craft and want to give back to give back to the um, give back to uh, you know stopping the violence or whatever the case may be. Hold on one second. I mean, those is important things. Uh, well, so we have the definitely, block, less, we have, definitely less salute you for those situations. But go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Then we have the block by block, but a lot of people don't know. Can you call me a real quick to see? Yeah, I def I got to go down to the last uh, City of Dreams Coalition event and to see just all of the different things that you had going on down there at the press conference. You had uh, like the job fair situation. You had the kids doing the talent show. You had a uh, fashion show going on. You had the musical performance. Like just had a lot of networking and a lot of different things inter interacting in the city. And I, one thing I always tell people about the city we get a bad rap for what's going on and we got to do a bad job of connecting and helping each other. So if somebody is doing something and I'm able to shine a little bit of light on it, just with the situation that I got, I will definitely yeah. try to shine that light on it and definitely try to bring anything good, to, anything that I can bring to the table to help out with that situation. So yeah, definitely like, like, salute like, a lot of people don't know I was getting death threats early, early that morning, you know, uh, things of that, uh, things of that sort. Um, you know, and as I'm evolving, you know, I've had to let more than a few people go. Um, you know, uh, uh, actually making uh, videos now, um, receipts of uh, even even just with our, um, you know, uh, different different. Uh, how can I say this? People trying to get over. Or they always try to get over on people. Back door. You know, we give out opportunities. We give out opportunities, and it's like I'm. You know, I always everybody know I'm very quiet. I, I don't go to do that back and forth. Well. Okay, um, so he caught me just uh, real quick asking. Um, we don't, we don't, are sometimes the best things to hand people because they're going yeah, to give them a chance to prove whether you want it or not. But the whole thing is most of them don't. Most of them don't. And it's like, even just like my ex-assistant, ex she was only with us for a couple of months. And when I say just because she had knowledge, just because she had knowledge, she came around and, and when I was just so, like uh, getting a, a wicked, 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 um, Wicked uh, 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 domestic violence uh, um, from uh, from my ex husband. I was just getting through that, getting a life coach, getting a sponsor. She knew all that, and she played on all uh, like she played on all that. Um, uh, you know, just being thirsty, and it's like she done stuff with so many people around me. All this crazy nonsense, and it's like when I came out last year, it's like damn, I'm trying to help people. And it's like y'all just so thirsty about getting at rappers and sleeping everybody. It's like it's not about the mission for y'all. Do you understand? Like, do you understand? But that's why that's why one of the things that you just said was you had to cut off people. That's why yeah. said, opportunity is the best thing that you can give people because the opportunity that you give them will weed out who wants it and who doesn't. Who's looking exactly. to have a hobby and who's looking to play? Some people like you gave me the opportunity to come down and I told you I'm on my way. And yeah, but you came, came with, through. I I came with nothing but me, my me, my right hand man. Shout out to Ro from episode 100. It was me and Ro. It was all I had. CEO row? No, CEO row. That's my brother, but not even that row. My cousin row. CEO row. That's oh. my brother. You ain't know that. You see, like <laughs> that's your brother. What? That's my brother. Your blood? Man, since that nigga got off the plane, that's my brother. Yo, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Yo, when I say like, even with the like, uh, you know, and he's seen a lot. Like he's seen a lot, and I was, you know, I was even telling, you know, telling him. And you know, and Kansas, you know, uh, uh, Kansas, our head of our street outreach team. That's why I came. I don't, I don't move at nighttime. I don't move without them. And for them, you know, I'm like how you say weeding people out. And it's like now that I'm at the 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 top of the the strongest I've ever been dealing with. You know, uh, my strokes dealing with. You know, still don't have a safe place to stay, to, to go because I got two so called Muslim men, uh, well boys. Uh, put my he put my house up one day. You know what I mean. One, I got in jail three times, but uh, th not once, not twice, but three times. Was there for it. But, like, when I was going through it, nobody said, Sister Talia, do you need a hand? Do you need some support? Not at all. So now the team that I've evolved and I have with me now, I wish I would go back to depression. 
And that's the thing, right? That's one of the things too. Uh, please, if you're listening to this, help no, the I helper. We need you to help the helper. If you, if the person you always call, you need to actually call them from time to time and see how they're doing, and not just dump all the shit that you got going on on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. People My man called that. me. Shout out, shout out to Ted. My man called me. Ted called me like two, three weeks ago, and. Said, damn, bro, you sound like everything wasn't cool when I talked to you the other day. Everything good. So he's the first person in my life that ever called me and asked me, damn, you good? Or how you doing, bro? It's usually just like a transitional thing people say in a conversation. And I told him, like, you don't know how major that was to me because it's the first time it ever happened. And I'm in my mid fucking 30s. But um, exactly, in, exactly. Before we wrap up uh, episode 102, uh, Talia, I appreciate you coming on. This will be the first of many. We got a bunch of different situations that we'll be able to work out, a bunch of different things we're going to be able to make happen in the future. Okay. Anything, uh, any handles you want to throw out there to get the folks to follow you, or anything you want to say before we wrap up episode 102 um, of the How to Hustle Podcast behind Yes, all I, all I want to say is one thank you. To, and hold on one second before you pull up. Um, I just want to say, may a, may God, may Allah bless us all. Everyone that's coming, we're, coming we're Muslim together. and never hide. We're Muslim and never hiding it on this on this show. So I'm did he laugh? I'm sorry. I said we're Muslim and never hot in that. So you ain't got to. Oh, no, no, would no. Like oh. to say, if you would like to say, may Allah bless you, then. Oh, I know. No, no, no. I know that. <laughs> uh, the radio, when I got an iHeart and a radio, I, like, a lot of people don't know. It was me doing street talk with the Rain Battle Moral for years. That once a quarter, a lot of people don't know that was me. But, anyways, I, I used to go outside Lake them. They used to look at me like, and. <laughs> no, I don't play no games. Yeah. So, like, but uh, but I just want to thank everyone, everyone, like the, the test of times, um, you know, uh, the strength that they're giving that that my team is giving me, um, seeing who's who, who's really a real about not just their craft, but about the support, about you know having integrity and character and morals, and seeing that the woman that I am, the woman that I, and everything I sacrificed that that was there that day at the Met. That, and when I say we're still going to triumph and I'm still going to continue to do everything that I said I was going to do. Everything. It, it also, I just want to salute everyone that has stood by my side and it's not going in vain because we're about to go even harder. We have our iftar on April 13th. Um, April 13th. So I would love for you to come and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, I have the podcast and do a special taping for uh, a special tribute and iftar on uh, behalf of for the City of Dreams. City Dreams, thanking all of our members, um, our members, and also uh, our other, uh, our uh, also our other affiliates um, and uh, churches, and uh, that are also within City of Dreams. Um, asking everybody to come together to celebrate our our holiday, celebrate one of our holidays. Um, like I said, uh, we're we're, um, we're uh, in our faith, but as we ha- with all of us come together, then that's what that we're going to continue to spread love. So that's April thirteenth. I'm taking a break. I'm taking a quick break. Uh, then um, take a quick break, but they're coming right back May 6th, May 7th for our two day, not one, but two day um, Stop the Violence basketball tournaments. Uh, if you don't know, we started with City of Dreams basketball uh, for my kids. That was named after uh, uh, a song from Little Snoop and Meek Mills for my oldest son. So that's how that arrived. And that's where City of Dreams name arrived for my children and for Meek Mills from, because of my kids. But then we have, we have that. We have that once every month. So it's a not just a uh, excuse me, stop the violence event, but it's basketball, job and resource fairs, um, uh, uh, workshops, all different types of opportunities. So I'm taking a step back, uh, taking a step back and seeing who really out here putting that work in. I I, I have to really uh, reality check, and you know I can't keep pushing people that don't want to push themselves because that only hurts me. And you know I look at my at my people as family. So that, that I have to know that that hurts me. The business is business. My business is helping helping other people' uh, uh, dreams come true, whatever their passion is, and that's what I love to do. So with that being said, you know, for uh, we have that coming up. We have our block by blocks coming up. Um, uh, we have our chat and choose with the only a couple elected officials that we are heavily pushing that can understand us, understand the hip hop culture. Um, so yes, we're not stopping. They can keep the death threats. They can keep putting the house up on the gram. That's not going to stop. That's not going to stop us because I have my team, I have my Uma, and I have a law. Copy that. Ain't nothing else needs to be said. That's episode one hundred and two, y'all. We are out. Feel it, feel it.